Bill Siegel has a very particular twinkle in his eye, which speaks of a sharp intellect tempered by deep kindness and humor. His other eye is covered by a patch, the reminder of a car accident many years ago, which he survived in a near miraculous recovery. As someone who spent the better part of his life as a spiritual seeker, Mr. Siegel has a special quality that's hard to describe. You have the feeling of being with someone who's come to a genuine understanding of the meaning of life and how to live it. As we sit on his balcony, surrounded by the sounds of New York City, I'm reminded of a scene in Ken Burns' film where Mr. Siegel speaks about living amidst a world of visual beauty that we mostly don't see. And I wonder if he feels the same thing is true about sound. Well, uh, for me, there's a sound which fills the universe. I was always interested in the Japanese approach to sound, which was through not so much sound as silence. You know, there's a tradition in Japan and the no play when there's a moment of great silence. This silence has its own reverberations. If one stops and be, one hears behind all this noise that we're hearing now, one may hear from a, oneself a profound sound. This I understood at one time the Japanese spoke about as a sound of one hand clapping or the sound that fills the universe. It's a sound that is no sound. Now, if you're still enough, If one is still enough, one can hear the, the stillness as a material thing. And it's a wonderful, refreshing sound which carries its own special energy with it. This vibration, if one is still now, you, me, if we're still and stop, behind the noise there is a sound, a note, an energy, which could harmonize our whole, our entire being. This is a pity of the uh, destiny of human beings that we haven't been brought up sufficiently to appreciate this, to know about it, to learn how to listen, to listen in such a way that one receives this transforming element. And then we go inside his apartment, where it's more possible to have a moment of relative silence. And Mr. Siegel says that to be open to this universal sound, one needs to know oneself better. And for that to happen, it's not necessary to go to a monastery. One could, for example, make a ritual out of an everyday act, even having a cup of coffee. A uh, ritual for me would mean to be aware of what one is doing at the moment, would uh, transform an ordinary activity into something extraordinary. So let's say I hold a cup of coffee in my hand and I sip the coffee, but most of the time I'm not aware of the texture, the warmth, the cold. I'm not aware of many things that are taking place, which if I were aware of them, would give me a little bit of special and extra energy. In other words, what I'm saying is we go through life asleep to the forces which might be beneficent forces to help us. Now, being still for a moment, I may feel myself in an entirely new way. And this new way of being can feed me just as good food can feed me. When, when you think of fine music, when you think of Mozart and Bach, uh, we all have experience listening to these great musicians of something of a vibration through their music, which is really feeding us. We can all can relate to that. This merely is an indication of the possibilities of the human being to be fed and to receive energy in an entirely new way. Is there a music uh, of any kind that you are particularly fond of, one that you feel has a, a quality of you know, transmitting something special? Well, there are many, of course, it depends. 
uh, long ago, 50 years ago in Japan, there were still some places where one can go and hear someone, usually it was a woman, flute player, and those sounds really went right into your gut. They really touched you. It's this sound that I'm particularly fond of. One must remember to make this pause in the middle of the mechanical processes which uh, rule our lives. I remember now, someone told me to stop. Well, in that moment of stop, there is a possibility to hear what I've never heard before, to hear in such a way I've never heard, and to be in a different way than my usual mechanical headlong rush into life but try to remember that something can help you and to find that something is a, perhaps a search for a lifetime, but something can help you even now. As I leave Mr. Siegel's apartment, I have to admit to myself that I'm not hearing the soundless sound, that I'm too distracted by my own thoughts and the sounds around me. But it occurs to me that even though at this moment I don't completely understand his words, the important thing may be to just remember them. <laughs> 